Good evening and welcome to the 2021 State of San Diego County Address. Thank you for joining us. This evening's address will be delivered by Nathan Fletcher, Chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. San Diego County is home to more tribal nations than any other county in the United States. Those tribal nations are comprised of the Kumeyaay, Luceno, Cupeño, and Kuea people. Wings. Peel in ya in your webs. Nuke Ocho Ocho Yo. Iyai Quachmi. Snow Kupat. A to hat. A mat be ye. The Nayam Kuchut Hame. Nick Mitch in your webs. Ipai in your Mitch. Katutum. Kawakum. In Yakum. A wickum. In Yai Yam Kohan, San Diego County Board of Supervisors, Wim Ahomat Ipai Nyamat, Hi Yai Kwachmi Kepnap, Tanai Iuchap, Pilinya Iuchap, Nimsap Iuchap, Kuma. To my knowledge, this is the first time that our language has been spoken to address any governing body of our county. Thank you. San Diego County's rich and diverse cultures are what makes our county a great place to live, work, and visit. This evening's invocation is an original prayer written for the state of the county by interfaith leaders who represent the diverse tapestry of our county's spiritual landscape. Creator of the universe, bringer of light, energy, of connection, common goodness, spirit of resilience and love. We center our collective and connected hearts together tonight. Holy One of Blessing, eternal fountain of creativity, grant to all of us the ability to see the world through your loving ways. Help us to right the wrongs of the past, to dismantle the laws and regulations designed to create and maintain second-class existence for your people of color your indigenous people, and all your people, our neighbors, whose ethnic heritages have been used as an excuse for the trampling of their humanity, their dignity, and the diminishment of their rights and opportunities. From housing restrictions to still unpaved streets, from fracking adjacent to indigenous communities to the school to prison pipelines, give us the strength to say enough Invigorate us, God, in this urgent and sacred work. Give us resilience, strength, connection, and love. Almighty God, the source of hope, we remember those who travel across countries and continents seeking opportunity, freedom, peace, justice, and refuge. We remember those who are turned away, those who are attacked, those who are torn from their families and those who have lost loved ones to violence in all its forms. Give strength to the traveler and wisdom to us all so that we might see more clearly the difficult journey so many have traveled. Help us to care for the sojourner in meaningful ways, offering comfort, shelter, mercy, and compassion. Give us resilience, strength, connection, and love. We remember and celebrate all the people who've been made by you and in your image. We acknowledge and celebrate the many intersectional identities of this community. We see the life, creativity, emotional labor, advocacy, joy, 
academic success, manual labor, and all the worth that is added by the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, gender fluid, straight, cis, and especially transgender women of color who endure the most violence. We pray for an end to the chains of systemic, religious, social, economic, and intellectual oppression against the communities of sexual and gender identity minorities. Inspire us to siblinghood, common good, and correctly using people's pronouns. Give us resilience, strength, connection, and love. Spirit of call and inspiration, we remember our leaders and the sacred duties placed upon them. We lift up our leaders in our communities and in our workplaces, leaders in our places of worship and our humanist organizations, leaders in our places of business and town councils, leaders in our cities and our county, leaders in our districts and our state and our country. Guide them with wisdom and compassion, inspiration and commitment to the public good. Give them resilience, strength, connection, and love. Our God, I graciously ask you to be the God you promised to be in your word. Be a healer to those who've contracted the coronavirus. Strengthen those who are recovering. Comfort those who've experienced a loss, whether it be a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, a loss of a home, or an opportunity to further their education. Protect those who are caring for a world rocked by this problematic pandemic. God, I also ask that you heal the pain caused by this pandemic that's not physical. I ask that you heal those who are struggling with anxiety, depression, stress, or any other emotional trauma caused by these trying times. Your word says that you are near the brokenhearted, and God, we need you near us now. Give us resilience, strength, connection and love. Creator of the universe, bringer of light, energy of connection. Common goodness, spirit of resilience and love. As faith leaders across traditions, we join you and the good people of San Diego County to bring this prayer into being so that the light of resilience, strength, connection and love shines within us all. Amen. Amen. And leading us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance tonight are school children from throughout San Diego County. Put your, Put your right, right hand, hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. I would adapt. One nation under God and the visible with liberty and justice for all. Singing the national anthem this evening is a dedicated registered nurse from UC San Diego Health, the first hospital system in the region to treat patients with COVID-19. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket regular the bombs bursting in air gave through through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangle banner yet wait? Oh, the land of the free. 
the home of the brave. Good evening. I am Dr. Wilma Wooten, the public health officer for San Diego County. I'm in downtown San Diego at the first vaccination superstation in the county and California. The COVID-19 pandemic is one of the most concerning issues our community is facing right now. The vaccines administered here and at many other vaccination sites across our region play a significant role in getting our region back to normal. We are ready to beat COVID-19. I'm ready to hug my parents, my friends, and my patients again. I'm ready to play music with my students again. I'm ready for our communities to feel a sense of ease again so our patients, our families, and our friends can start to heal. We are ready to let our kids play. We are ready for a transition to a zero carbon future in a way that creates good union jobs and more just and equitable communities. I'm ready to go back to grooming conventions. I'm ready to be COVID-19. Ready to play. I am ready to travel to see my family and to spend more in-person time with my friends. And I'm ready to go to a Grateful Dead concert with my good friend, Nathan Fletcher. And we are ready to cut hair and do work. We are ready. We are ready. To have fun again. Fun again. I'm ready for my kids to get back in school, things to get back to normal, and my husband not to have to work 24 seven. I am ready to see my patients smiling faces again, to see my nephews and nieces, and most importantly, to see my parents in Chicago. We are ready to heal. We are ready to welcome customers back again into our restaurants. Now welcome chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, Nathan Fletcher. He's ready to deliver the 2021 State of the County Address. Good evening. I come to you tonight from the county's Emergency Medical Operations Center. 370 days ago, our county was one of the first in the nation to declare a public health state of emergency on COVID-19, activating this site and others to respond. From this modest warehouse, our region's massive mobilization was equipped. Masks, ventilators, testing supplies, PPE, and now vaccines. At its heart, thousands of dedicated workers responding to the ever-changing, incredibly challenging pandemic of the last year. A year that has tested us and at times divided us. A year of tremendous sacrifice and tremendous loss. A year that has shown us the very best of each other and sadly some of the worst. But through it all, we never gave up. We are still battling COVID-19, but the tide is turning. The last year has shown our enduring strength and toughness. As I stand before you tonight, I have no doubt the state of our county is resilient. And together, we are ready to rise. Ready to rebuild, rebuild our economy, our children's education. Ready to restore restore our faith and trust in one another, ready to reunite, reunite both from social distancing and deep divisions. And we're ready to recover, rebuild, and truly build anew. And so tonight, I present to you progress in our fight against COVID-19, along with plans to set our county government in a new direction. We don't simply strive to get back to normal. We want better than that. Our commitment is comprehensive action to make life fundamentally better for all. COVID's conflicts get the attention, but our commitment to one another, that is what's kept me going through the darkest moments. I see that in Cam Fomby, a Marine Corps veteran and restaurant owner who didn't protest the public health orders, he prioritized them. Because in his words, you can rebuild a business, you can't rebuild a life. The perseverance of Elisa Barnett with the San Diego LGBT Community Center on the streets delivering groceries to homebound seniors. I see our resilience and Michelle Pingle, a nurse who has spent a year fighting to save lives from COVID-19. She wowed us with the national anthem. 
and she represents a workforce that has wowed us for a year with their grace, compassion, and commitment. I see incredible strength every single day in my wife. She does her job, a difficult one. And then she does everything else. Kids on Zoom, out to play, things at home in perfect order. She amazes me. But I also know that she represents millions of women who always find a way to step up and get it all done. I see the commitment of world-renowned scientists, doctors Christian Anderson, Natasha Martin, Chip Schooley, and many more who are in global demand but still make the time to advise a county supervisor on following the science. And I see it in all of you, parents, mothers, neighbors, essential workers, each of you doing your part to protect each other. For over a year, you did not give up your commitment and you did not lose hope, and neither has your county government. Our immediate priority continues to be controlling and defeating coronavirus. COVID cases are down, vaccinations are up, hospitalizations have stabilized. But we must continue to be resilient, wearing masks and avoiding high-risk settings because of continued COVID spread and more contagious new strains. But now we have the hope of a vaccine present, and we are rising to meet the task at hand. All of your county government is focused on distributing and administering the vaccine because the sooner everyone gets vaccinated, the sooner we get our lives back, get San Diegans back to work, get our kids back in the classroom. Our county has led the state of California, not a leader, but the leader in vaccines administered. In January, we launched our state's first vaccination superstation at Petco Park. There are now five superstations and more than 15 community points of distribution in the areas hit hardest by COVID. While the shortage of vaccines and problems and shipments have caused frustration, we are continuing to press ahead as best we can. All of San Diego's skilled nursing and long-term care facilities who house the seniors most vulnerable to COVID, they've all been vaccinated. Phone lines stand ready to assist seniors without computer access. If a senior lacks transportation, we will take them. And if they can't leave their home, we will go to them. Mobile teams are going to senior living centers, hard to reach rural areas, and they are standing ready to vaccinate our farm workers in the fields. We've added community health workers to go into the hardest hit neighborhoods with dedicated appointments, fighting for equitable vaccine access for San Diegans too often left behind. Together with our healthcare partner, San Diego County has administered more than 684,000 vaccines. But it's not enough. We have to do more. With even more effort and better outcomes, in particular on ensuring access to those communities most impacted. In the coming weeks, we'll also be launching new sites to vaccinate the next tier. Teachers, grocery workers, and yes, law enforcement. And we stand ready to go March 15th to be able to offer vaccines to those with underlying health conditions and disabilities. And while there is hope on the horizon with the vaccine, the harsh reality of this global pandemic is well known. Leading the county's public health response has been a daily choice between bad options and worse options, trying to do the least harm. And even when we're making a positive difference saving lives, I know many San Diegans don't feel a positive impact because of what had to be done. San Diego has a death rate lower than any surrounding county, half that of surrounding states, but most of our kids are still not in the classroom. We performed over 3.3 million COVID tests at 37 public testing sites, done contact tracing, case investigations, yet we could not contain the most recent national search. We're delivering over $300 million in economic aid to families, small businesses, and nonprofits. Yet it didn't stop the pain. It's barely softened the blow. Too many small businesses on the brink, too many working families pushed to the edge. Last year was a year of inaction from Washington, though we know hope and help is now on the way. 
The reality COVID has made clear is that this is not just a global public health pandemic. We see clearly there is a pandemic of inequality that we must stamp out, a pandemic of injustice that we must overcome, a pandemic of intolerance that we must unify against. And so tonight, let us resolve to continue our fight, not only against the coronavirus, but continue our fight against all the underlying conditions that have made this response so hard. From real action to tackle climate change, to substantive, not performative work on racial justice, from economic opportunity to education, clean air and water to protecting our immigrant population, from mental health care to housing and homelessness, Let's take action to make county government truly work for every San Diego. And to our county workers, who are the backbone of our county government, I value you, I appreciate you, and I will always be here to support you. And now with spring coming, with hope on the horizon, we must look towards the future and the incredible opportunities ahead. My first action this year as chair of the Board of Supervisors was setting in motion a new progressive agenda for a new era in county government. We will always honor our commitment to the unincorporated communities. And even with crime at historic lows, we cannot lose our focus on public safety. But we have an opportunity to do more, making justice, fairness, and opportunity a core principle guiding our actions. The legacies of the original sin at the founding of our country, they're still present today in all parts of our society, land use, environmental, economic, criminal justice. We face the reality a black baby born in southeastern San Diego will live on average 10 years less than a white baby born in La Jolla. The reality a Latino child in Barrio Logan is seven times more likely to have asthma than a white child in Solana Beach. The average life expectancy of a trans woman of color is just 35 years. A perpetual wage gap that sees workers of color and women paid less for the same work than white men. Our community can't rise to its full potential if so many San Diegans are prevented from ever rising at all. That's why we brought back the Human Relations Commission to empower the community and strengthen the Citizens Law Enforcement Review Board to provide more oversight. We declared racism a public health crisis to break down barriers keeping communities of color from accessing the health care they need. This past year, we also established the county's new Office of Equity and Racial Justice with a mission as profound as it is broad, to incorporate equity and racial justice into all our policies, all our programs, changing our culture. We must add to this office the requirement for an annual racial equity report to assess our impacts and progress based on data. Let's hold ourselves accountable to see if our rhetoric matches our record. Intentional government policies created these racial inequities, and it will take intentional government policies to change them. Overcoming persistent inequality will remain a permanent focus of county government. Overcoming the economic consequences of COVID-19 remains one of our most critical challenges. San Diego's working people and small businesses are resilient, and I know that together we can rise out of this crisis. I see this spirit in C.J. Martin of Invictus Fitness. He closed when COVID first hit, then went outdoors, went back indoors, now back outdoors. He struggled but endured keeping his workers employed and his gym open safely. He is truly an unconquerable soul. I see it in all the working people struggling out there, those who are laid off and all those who don't have the luxury of working remotely. They get up and clock in every single day. I see you. I know how hard it's been. And your county government is committed to doing our part and more to help. Last year, we launched the Small Business Stimulant Grant Fund with almost $50 million in emergency relief for local businesses and the San Diegans they employ. In partnership with the San Diego Foundation, we organized the COVID-19 Community Response Fund, aiding over 2.4 million San Diegans disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. 
and we delivered income replacement stipends for those who contracted COVID. But there is much work ahead. Working with Supervisor Joel Anderson, we will develop strategies to help rebuild and relaunch our local economy safely. And we won't leave small businesses or industries hardest hit by COVID behind. We will also join the call of the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation to increase county contracting with local businesses. Just a 5% increase would inject $75 million more into our annual economy. But building a brighter future in San Diego means that we can't just ease the economic pain COVID has caused. We have to restore fairness and opportunity for all San Diegans, especially to those whom opportunity has long been denied. I believe county government has a big role to play in combating income inequality. This recession is the most unequal recession in American history. And we must fight to fix all the economic inequalities COVID has exposed. The policy decisions we make in this county on wages, job security, public health funding must always demonstrate a commitment to the worker who held our communities together in this tough time. And this starts with our county government coming in line with other jurisdictions by adopting a living wage ordinance because no one who works full time should live in poverty. In the coming weeks, I will also be bringing forward a measure on worker recall and retention. We have to make sure those who lost jobs due to the pandemic have a fair shot to get them back when their businesses reopen. This year, working with our district attorney, we will launch a workplace justice initiative to crack down on wage theft, to protect low wage workers from exploitation. And I will follow that up with the proposal to create the county's first ever Office of Labor Standard Enforcement because you can't have a fair economic recovery if working people don't get a fair shake. And now let me say something you've never heard a chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors say. Unions, those in organized labor, are our partners and allies critical to rebuilding San Diego's economy fairly. Let's be honest. Our economy was at its strongest when unions were at their peak. The decline in union membership has tracked directly with the decline in the middle class and with the rise in income inequality. The fight for good middle class jobs means the support of worker efforts to organize and join a union. And supporting San Diego's workers, our caregivers, janitors, hotel workers, our construction workers and nurses, that means supporting San Diego's unions. And we are incredibly fortunate in San Diego to have a balanced economy. The military is our anchor, one of the world's largest biotech hubs on the cutting edge of the innovative economy, and our beautiful weather laying the foundation for our tourism sector. But we can build on these strengths by attracting new industries that create good jobs for San Diegans. We are currently in the new golden age of television more streaming, new platforms, more content than ever before. This year, I will propose the creation of a robust San Diego film office, not just a commission, but a working office to bring back San Diego's film industry and the good jobs for stagehands, carpenters, designers, artists, and innovators that come with it. Working with regional governors, we will streamline and expedite permitting, make government-owned facilities accessible, consolidate community services needed to attract the entertainment jobs to the future of San Diego. And as we transition to a clean energy economy, we will ensure the investments we make going green, those investments will go to creating good jobs for local workers. The opportunity to see generational investments in infrastructure has the potential to build the communities we need and provide the jobs our people deserve. Electricians, engineers, entrepreneurs, everyone has a role to play in building San Diego's future. Throughout this pandemic, mental health challenges and substance abuse have been rising. And it's now time we rise to meet this challenge. Even before COVID as a candidate for this office, I made clear my highest long-term priority is rebuilding San Diego's behavioral health system. The combination of mental health and drug treatment services. Right now, an underfunded and outdated system just shuffles patients, 
especially those experiencing homelessness from one crisis institution to the next without making a lasting difference. Last year, we launched a $25 million behavioral health impact fund designed to jumpstart an expansion of critically needed care. In the coming weeks, I will announce its initial results, and when San Diego sees the impact made, I know there will be demands to do more. We can and must build a network of comprehensive behavioral health care that delivers the right services to the right person at the right time. We must move from crisis care to continuous care. We must integrate behavioral health fully into the actions to reduce homelessness. That's why in recent weeks, we launched a new approach to the most common and often most dangerous entry point into behavioral health, a call to 911. The vast majority of emergency behavioral health calls law enforcement receives over 59,000 a year are about providing medical assistance, not making arrests. The county's new mobile crisis response teams begun as a pilot program in North County are replacing cops with clinicians on behavioral health calls. It's already delivering results by de-escalating dangerous situations and providing treatment, not punishment, to people in crisis. I appreciate the work of our district attorney in this effort. Over the coming year, we plan to take this innovative program countywide and fully integrate it into the 911 system. But we must recruit more behavioral health professionals, those in critical need to make this program and our entire expanded system a success. We face a steep shortage of essential mental health workers. To tackle this challenge, I'll be convening the first of its kind, San Diego County Behavioral Health Workforce Conference, bringing together the heads of our major universities and community colleges to bring a new crop of behavioral health professionals to the front lines of this fight. So we make real progress on behavioral health and also create a pipeline for thousands of good-paying careers along the way. But the right response still has to direct people to the right place to get the right care. That's why I fought last year to create the Hillcrest Regional Crisis Hub. Previously an abandoned building planned as a site for more luxury condos, but instead we're building a world-class center for behavioral health recovery. And more hubs like this are on the way to serve every region of our county. And when individuals are ready for discharge, it won't be back onto the streets with no ability to access follow-up care. They will be paired with a care coordinator, someone to help them navigate housing, access services, and be a source of ongoing stability and support that they can count on. That's just a part of our larger effort to break the cycle of poverty, addiction, disease, and incarceration. The county board just voted to abandon the long-failed war on drugs and embrace harm reduction to address substance abuse, a 180-degree shift from the past. We launched our Accelerated Connections to Treatment program to bring vital drug treatment into our mental health hospital. And the next week, we will be issuing a standing order from Dr. Wilma Wooten enabling community-based naloxone to prevent opioid overdose with medication paid for by the state and distributed peer-to-peer -peer, all through a county clearinghouse. But we know supportive housing goes hand in hand with effective drug treatment. And in the coming months, I will unveil a proposal and location to make significant progress on both. No doubt we will face opposition. But we can no longer let the not in my backyard naysayers prolong suffering on our streets and our neighborhoods. And all of these efforts will help reduce homelessness. But the creation of a new county department of homeless solutions and equitable communities is critical to streamlining our regional response. This office will allow us to work more closely with local cities, in particular a renewed effort with Mayor Todd Gloria on maximizing available state and federal resources. People are hurting, neighborhoods are suffering, and we have to do better. Doing better on mental health also means restoring humanity and improving health care in our jails. And on this front, I have some news. Earlier this week, Sheriff Bill Gore and I came to an agreement on a new framework for health care in our county jails. Sheriff Gore will put a stop to the expansion of outsourcing health care 
and together we will seek a significant increase in the number of county health nurses, county mental health professionals, and county drug treatment providers in our jails. We will embrace services like medication for addiction treatment and a new focus on connections into ongoing care upon release. I appreciate the sheriff's collaboration. We share the same goal, treating people humanely and lowering recidivism. Now we share the same plan. All of these efforts, when taken together and when accomplished, will make San Diego a national leader in treating behavioral health challenges as the real health care challenges they are. But more importantly, they will touch and transform lives in unprecedented ways. We all know someone who has struggled with addiction or a mental health injury. They are our brothers, sisters, children, parents, our friends, our neighbors. They are all of us. And for all of us, we're ready to meet this challenge. The pandemic has also brought great hardship for our kids. I want to take a moment to recognize the nothing less than heroic efforts of the county's child welfare workers who never stop serving our community's most at-risk kids even at the height of COVID surge. They've shown resilience throughout this crisis, keeping at-home visits, safety inspections, kids counseling going in this critical time. And so have our kids, shown resilience. They have struggled through so much for so long. As a parent, as, as a father, you know deeply how much you want the very best, not just for your kids, but for every kid. And I'm ready to get our kids back in the classroom. And I believe we are now in a place with progress on vaccinations uh, and COVID that it's time to once again let our kids play. Our kids have been a focus of our emergency relief effort, investing in childcare, summer camps, internet connectivity for families facing crisis and COVID. But the truth is deep disparities in children's access to support, education, and a loving and stable home have been with us for years. We know adverse childhood experiences, ACEs, if not quickly met with trauma-informed care, can have devastating lasting effects. And every issue an elected official confronts is a mix of community need, professional interest, and at times personal experience. For myself and my mom, this one is deeply personal. And that motivates me to act. Two years ago, we created the Child and Family Strengthening Council to drive needed reforms in our approach to child welfare, to make vital investments, early childhood education, parenting resources, job training, family counseling, and more, things to give every child a chance to thrive. We evaluated the 88 recommendations from a comprehensive 2018 audit. 49 have been completely implemented. 12 more will be done by the end of the month. The rest will be done by the end of the year. And we're going beyond those recommendations with a new focus on equity and strengthening families to ensure the best for San Diego's kids. That includes a new transformative proposal I am excited to bring forward. A proposal to establish a campus to fully support mothers and their children who have faced separation due to addiction, incarceration, or instability. We want to help break generational cycles. That means not just reunification, but a deep and meaningful investment with a safe and loving environment, providing housing, childcare, job training, and a path to a better future. In my post as chair of the Child and Family Strengthening Council and the First Five Commission, I will bring forward a working families legislative platform with our state, local, and national counterparts to enhance resources and support for the things we know are most critical for families to thrive early childhood education, and affordable quality childcare. We're also creating a unique partnership with Rady Children's Hospital to develop a comprehensive behavioral health hub exclusively for youth. This will greatly expand clinical services to support children and families. Among our goals in all of these efforts is keeping our kids out of the criminal justice system 
Treating kids like kids and investing in them, not incarcerating them, are the values that guide the county's renewed focus on juvenile justice reform. We recently created a separate juvenile division of probation called Youth Development and Community Services with a focus on national best practices and with its own vision and mission different from the adult system. This year, we will complete construction on phase one of a new juvenile justice campus, creating a place of rehabilitation and renewal that delivers restorative services, encourages family engagement, and fosters academic achievement. Gone will be Concertina Wire and Lock Cells. In its place, open space, trauma-informed care, and education. But we must fund and prioritize phase two, demolishing the 1952 juvenile hall and completing the final piece of this comprehensive approach. Building these new facilities is an urgent priority. We need to ensure that youth in our county's care are supported, safe, and given a real shot at success. Along with these new programs, we're advancing systematic policy reforms on juvenile justice, de-escalation and implicit bias training to reduce the use of force, trauma-informed care, restorative practices that take into account adolescent brain development to increase the true support that kids need. We established a third achievement center to provide community-based treatment services that prevent recidivism and promote positive outcomes for justice-involved youth. But with a new board, it's time to pull all of these efforts together with a clear path moving forward. I have called a special meeting of the Board of Supervisors on February 23rd, focused on the future of juvenile justice in San Diego County, with a special emphasis on taking our probation department in this new direction. Our board is also engaged with community stakeholders in the search for a new chief probation officer one who fully embraces the opportunity for progress on juvenile justice. And through it all, we will continue to depend on our probation officers. They've been asked to absorb a lot the last few years. Transformative change in staffing, direction, policies and procedures. But we're gonna work through all of these issues together, knowing that we all share the same mission. Safe communities, thriving youth, and a recovery from COVID that doesn't leave our children behind. Every child deserves love, and every parent loves their child. Your country of birth or immigration status cannot impact the universal power of love for one another, and it should not impact our ability to show empathy and compassion. Two years ago, I saw San Diego come together. A county building, state funding, heroic nonprofits, all to provide a comprehensive response to meet the need of people seeking asylum. This wasn't the first time our region had to scramble to help our immigrant community. And today, we face it again. This year, we must commit ourselves to completing the work of having a dedicated shelter location for our refugees and asylees, one that can ramp up and ramp down based on the need. We stand ready as a region to shelter people from fire or flood, we must do the same here. And to coordinate these efforts and others, Supervisor Nora Vargas and myself will be proposing the creation of a County Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs. Perhaps the only positive surge in this pandemic has been the surge of San Diegans turning to outdoor activities to stay active and healthy. San Diegans are asking for expanded access to the parks beaches and natural treasures we all love and have come to rely on and appreciate even more during COVID. And the public expects action to ensure clean air and water and protect our environment for generations to come. The days of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors denying climate change are over. My first meeting as chair, Supervisor Lawson Reamer and I set in motion a climate action plan for San Diego County that will not only meet state goals to reduce carbon pollution, but exceed them. A plan to achieve 100% renewable energy, a pathway to a zero carbon economy, community choice energy that generates clean energy and good clean energy jobs, a region-wide response to the increasing threat of wildfires due to climate change, protecting both communities at risk and brave firefighters. And while Supervisor Desmond and I have 
had our differences. I know we agree on our commitment to fire safety and also agree on the need to better utilize our paramedics in the backcountry to provide community health care services. The pandemic has also brought a renewed urgency to the cause of environmental justice. According to Harvard researchers, people living in areas with poor air quality are more likely to die of COVID-19, and that is wrong. Everyone has a right to clean air, clean water, and a healthy life. When I joined the Board of Supervisors, I pushed to expand the county's water and air quality monitoring, especially in the most polluted communities. Now a newly reorganized San Diego Air Pollution Control District will do even more to make the air our children breathe clean. Together with the California Air Resources Board on which I serve, we're going to address San Diego's air quality challenges with bold steps forward. Some are underway, like the advanced clean truck rule that will reduce diesel truck emissions polluting residential neighborhoods. Pollution control measures for commercial harbor crafts so we keep San Diego Bay clean and safe. A redoubled effort led by Supervisor, Norgas, Supervisor Vargas to clean up the toxic sewage in the Tijuana River with an active and engaged federal government. And Supervisor Lawson Reamer will lead our efforts to finally address our stormwater infrastructure failures and growing funding gap. San Diego County recently adopted a landmark electric vehicle roadmap, setting us on the right course. But the governor's bold announcement, putting our entire state on the path to zero emission vehicles, inspires us to do more and faster. But another step we must take, focused on helping those hardest hit communities from air pollution, is to put in place something that can actually help them. This year, I will launch an effort to expand access to affordable used electric vehicles for low-income San Diegans. Most people can't afford a Tesla, but the sooner we all transition away from polluting fossil fuels to zero emission vehicles, the better off we will all be. I'm also passionate about expanding opportunities for families to enjoy the outdoors together. There is nowhere better to start than in our own backyard the County Waterfront Park, visited and enjoyed by more than 250,000 people every year. An amazing regional asset built by the previous Board of Supervisors. And now we're going to build on its beauty. To maximize an underutilized area, I'm bringing forward a plan to add a dog park, outdoor basketball, pickleball, which is apparently the new hot thing, and a world-class t-ball and wiffle ball field. To harness the excitement we all feel for our Padres, the ball field will be designed and built in partnership with the San Diego Padres. Let's replicate the feel of Petco Park for our little t-ball stars. And maybe, maybe we name it in honor of a Padre we know will be here for at least the next 14 seasons. And in a quieter corner of the park, in a proposal that may only excite me, we will add outdoor chess tables to bring a beautiful game into our beautiful outdoors. And keep geeking out with me for a minute here. In the new year, with a new school year, my office will provide a countywide chess program for students in underserved communities and an annual outdoor tournament to identify San Diego's best. Most of these improvements can be completed by next summer if we move quickly. But in the long term, I will work with the Port of San Diego because I fully support an idea in their master plan to realize a tremendous vision of the waterfront park. Let's extend it all the way to the water. Closing Harbor Drive to car traffic can revitalize a whole section of our city outdoor dining, walking, and bike paths all along the waterfront, making our county building the gateway to a recharged regional asset with connections to transit, world-class destinations like the Midway Museum, our cruise ship terminal, and so much more. It's also time our county government fully engage in helping complete the San Diego River Park. Two decades ago, this visionary effort started with the tremendous leadership of Senator Chris Kehoe. And now our generation must help finish the job. 52 miles of connected walking and bike paths from the ocean all the way to the mountains. 
I am proposing the creation of an enhanced infrastructure financing district to permanently fund the development and maintenance of this system of trails. Together with our partners who have worked on this for years, our regional allies, including Mayor Gloria, Council Members Campbell and Campillo, our tribal leaders, together we will convene a working group with a 90-day window to develop a strategy for funding, for connection, and for moving forward on our river park. It'll go along urban corridors through the backcountry, all the beauty of San Diego available for the entire world to enjoy. COVID has made so clear how the health of our environment shapes the health of our communities. And San Diegans can expect a renewed commitment from their county government on both. We've laid out a broad sweeping agenda, some will say too ambitious, but the moment requires it and we are ready to lead. While the last year has been tough and the road has been very long, San Diego remains resilient and a spirit of renewal is here. Throughout COVID, we leaned on one another. We had to dig deeper to summon the strength when it felt like we couldn't go on anymore. But the collective actions of a community of people came together with everyone doing their job. What I've seen over the last year, it, it reminds me of what I saw during multiple combat deployments as a Marine. It's long, difficult, full of grief, heartaches, progress and setbacks, ups and downs. But when I was there every day, we got up, we got in the fight, we did our job. And like COVID, and like combat, they both will leave some scars, some loss, some things that we will never completely shake. But they also both will leave a lasting legacy of a community that came together to confront the most challenging issue of our lifetime. I am proud of San Diego County, both where we stand and where we are headed. We have come through the darkest winter and we are truly headed into a brighter spring. We are ready to recover, ready to reunite. Together, we are ready to rise. Thank you for joining me this evening.